Basketball fans, welcome into the set of Raptors today inside the Scotiabank Arena. It's Akil Augustine, Sherm Hamilton, Warren Ward. If the Raptors do have a rival in this league historically, for me personally, it's got to be the New York Knicks. There's playoff history there. There's off-court drama. And there's the trade that sent OG Ananobi to the Knicks. And in my personal opinion, he was the missing piece for this group. Unfortunately, he's been out recently with the elbow injury. But I want to talk about how he's transformed this group and how he's kind of fit in like the perfect Tetris block dropped out of the air, Sherm. Your thoughts on OG as a knickerbocker? Well, first of all, you start with OG defensively. He was yeah. always an excellent individual defender. First team. Bigger, smaller player, doesn't matter. He was just that good. Physical, he got through screens, he was relentless, he was tough-minded, and he wanted those challenges. And I think when you talk about playing for a coach, Thibodeau, that's right up his alley. Oh, yeah, he loves that. Well, And when you look at the Knicks... Look, Jalen Brunson's great. Mm -hmm. Julius Randle is a good player as well. But who's really locking people down? Now, Josh Hart is a very say, good defender, a very good, uh, I think, two-way player to a certain extent. But OG's more experienced and has a different level of intensity and a different size. So I think when you talk about OG being added to that mix, he had shooting. He had the ability to score on his own. And he also had the ability to defend guys that those guys can't defend. Mm -hmm. Takes the load off of them defensively. So it's no surprise that you put him in that system with Coach Tibbs, and now you have a guy that just blends in perfectly. I can't wait to see him with Mitchell Robinson on the oh, back line for that yeah, next team. Yeah. That's going to be otherworldly. Let's talk about the offense, though, with you, because you're more of an offensive player. I don't think you really guard anybody, but OG <laughs> fit in quite perfectly. That corner three works for them, though. Thanks, Akil. You're welcome. <laughs> I got you, Hall of Famer. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I think OG was much more complimentary to what the Knicks want to do offensively, where RJ more so needed the basketball. Yep. Uh, I think OG fits right in in terms of him standing in the corner, being able to play and cut off of a Jalen Brunson, off of a Julius Randle, off of a Dante DiVincenzo even. Yep. You know, I think, I think, and then on top of that, defensively, he's stellar. I mean, they're 15 and two with him. I mean, it, it just goes to show how impactful he is. And OG's a player, he's not, he doesn't do anything exceptional in terms of offense, but he does everything like good enough, if that makes sense. Where, He'll knock down a corner three at a very high clip. So he's a perfect complementary piece. He doesn't really demand the basketball, but he finds a way to be effective, and that's a very good player. In recent history, I've kind of thought the Knicks is fool's gold. We go back to when they made the playoffs and they got dropped by the Atlanta Hawks and Trey Young went ice cold on them. But with the new addition and with kind of people buying into Coach Tibbs' vision, are they a real player in this Eastern Conference outside of the Boston Celtics, of course, who we know is shed head and shoulders above everybody else? I'm going to say when the playoffs come, the game starts to slow down. Yeah. And that has been historic. And I think if you get into a half-court game with a team that has two – well, if Julius Randle comes back, but even if he doesn't, Jalen Brunson is good enough in isolation situations to go ahead and get a bucket. They have enough guys who can guard other teams' best players between Josh Hart and OG – I'm going to say the Knicks, this is this is the best chance or the best overall team they've put together in the last few years. I think they can make a pretty good, pretty deep playoff run. I think they're one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference for sure. Yeah. And they've got good balance. They've got shooting. Yep. They've got guys who can break you down one-on-one -on -one and draw the second defender. And you can't underestimate or speak highly enough about the emergence of Jalen Brunson. He's changed the whole vibe, the whole energy, the whole way New York is looked at because this guy can get you 40 on any given night. And he's shown all season that it's not just for a couple games. No. It's the whole season he can bring it. So the playoffs are going to be another animal, and we saw a taste of this when he was in Dallas. And Luka got a bit banged up, and he took over. So he's just continuing that trend. And to me, when you have a guy like that at your point guard spot, if Julius Randle is healthy – and making good decisions. <laughs> the ultimate caveat. That's the caveat. Yeah, that's the caveat. And, you know, as you said, Mitchell Robinson's back. The way DiVincenzo's shooting the ball. Josh Hart has been phenomenal for them. And the way they've played without Julius Randle and OG Ananobi has given other guys the reps to actually make their depth even that much they're stronger. They're 7-3 and three in their last 10 games. Yeah, no, this, and more this is a good team. And more importantly, end of the day, sometimes you just need some dogs. You just – and the Knicks – 
They got some dogs. Okay. Lead dog being the Brunson Burner. The Toronto Raptors are trying to take out the New York Knicks. This one's coming to you from the Scotiabank Arena. Tip-off is 7.30. You can catch it on TSN and the radio call also on TSN. That does it for us here. Do remember, we're back later in the week. I'll be back at least. I'm not sure if you guys are back, but I'll be back to talk more Raptors brand basketball. Deuces. Thanks for watching the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel. Check out our latest videos and subscribe for more. Trent answers back. Gary, Gary sidestep. Three. Got it. <laughs>